Warning. This Iron Realm Media discussion contains adult language and themes. Not suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. So it looks like we've been joined by Alex. Hey, Alex. Hey. I'm Allison. Some sort of... What's the word I'm looking for? Phraseology, maybe? Well, it, it definitely helps. I mean, especially if it's something you're not used to doing, if you're not used to confrontation with people or any of the crap that comes with what all this is bringing to us, then having at least somewhere to go until it becomes comfort, you know, like kind of like learning the music and yep. then putting the music down. You got to have that familiarity. You got to have it in to there, be something it comfortable in there to live a place to live when you're going to try to do this. So you have to be able to be comfortable with something. So if anything, if you have, and even scripts can be such a bad idea because the minute right. somebody goes off your script, you're done for because you've <laughs> spent so much time learning and memorizing your script. You've almost failed to get a larger perspective and how that script fits into the larger picture. And I think that's, you can see it a lot of times in first amendment audits and a lot of times even cops, mainly cops, when you throw them off their script, they don't know what the fuck to do. They'll stutter and stammer, and that's when they kind of get their egos bruised and can get a little dangerous. But that's the issue with... Or telemarketers. Who? that's a good one. It's always fun to you throw know? them off their script. Yeah. So really, it's a good you idea to accept what it is, the, the lesson from the script. And once you can really, I think, embed that and actually accept... By God, we are free to do this stuff. And while it doesn't, I suppose freedom is a state of mind. <laughs> uh, once you can accept that your power as a human being, I think that your words will carry more weight. I think the script will matter less and your conviction and your knowledge that you are standing in truth is what's going to win the day. That's all I yeah, I think I think what it comes down to is just um, you know, finding the courage in yourself to stand up for what's right, and to to know that you're not doing anything wrong by just being a normal human being. That all these other people who are, are wearing their mask and telling you to wear their mask, they're the ones who have gone insane, and they they have no idea what they're talking about. And you just have to go up against that force and use your verbal command to, to stand up for yourself. And, and that's really what it is, just, just to try to have a normal experience going out grocery shopping or wherever you're going, whatever store it is. Um, and yeah, I can, I can share a couple of things that uh, I, I would normally say, and that's basically what I've had to deal with this this whole time all, all last year just every time i go into the store i in one way or another i just have to have a confidence within myself even if i don't have to talk to anyone if nobody bothers me which is the ideal outcome i just have the confidence to be able to just walk in like there's nothing wrong because there is nothing wrong like everything's fine all these other people are the ones who are misbehaving and just because, I don't know, they watch too much TV or they, they trust authority too much. It's just trying to maintain your sanity and just being a normal human being, going about your day, just doing your shopping and wanting to be left alone and to have peace. And Alex, you, you are very Alex, good. It's like, sorry. Go ahead. Say. Yeah. I, I was just going to say, you're very good at keeping your cool. Is there anything going on in your mind? Like when someone confronts you, are you thinking, you know, just, you know, breathe slowly? Yeah. Stay calm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, are, are these thoughts present in your brain when this is happening? I know you're paying attention to what they're saying, but you've probably heard it so many times. 
it's just that little voice saying, okay, it's happening. We're going to keep our cool. We're going to breathe. We're going to not raise our voice. I think those are the things you really have to focus on when you're in an emotional situation like this. Yeah, you're, you're spot on. I, I definitely have to, you know, in and out, deep breaths when I can, um, and just be calm because I, I know how tense the situation can get. And I've seen other videos, not necessarily like math videos, but like first time audits or just situations with between people where I can see that if they only remained calm, the outcome could have been a lot better. De-escalation. Because, you know, if you, once you let tensions rise, it's hard to get them back down. So I have to be the, you know, the steady the, the level-headed person to, to, you know, set the pace for other people around me to set the example. Because if I don't do it, who else is going to do it? Yeah, absolutely. Sorry about that, Savage. What were you going to say? I was just going to say, it's like, um, you know, sort of walking through a mental asylum and trying to have to explain to someone that you're not, you're not a mental person. You're, <laughs> you're a normal person. Please let me out. And they're like, no, you need, you need to <laughs> stick an anal swab up your ass or something. Did you see that you thing? You need I to just be crazy shared? like us. <laughs> Did you see that, what, what I just shared? More, more than a million Beijing residents undergoing coronavirus testing amid a fresh outbreak have been administered anal swabs, which are considered more accurate and raise the chances of detecting COVID-19 since said a Chinese disease specialist. <laughs> now, that is absolute medical sodomy. It's, um, it's what we predicted about... February or March last year, wasn't it? Yeah. We were going to sell anal, anal butt plugs. Our, our butt plugs, right? IRM yeah. butt I think plugs. I still have the picture I put together with our ta our, our logo on one. Yep. <laughs> well, it's here, people. <laughs> yeah, Lord. sorry. Um, we were going to do role playing or something, weren't we? So, well, yeah, give us, I mean, we kind of went over it just now, but. Is there anything you do before you even walk into the store? Um, I know you're kind of preparing yourself at all times for this confrontation. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because I, I just know that that's how it is. I've gotten used to it over the last year. And I, I just know that um, I should probably bring my camera and have it ready, if not rolling, every time I enter any store nowadays. And uh, for the most yeah. part, I've gotten a general idea of which stores um, are chill and don't give me any problems, and then I kind of know which stores are um, like more anal about, about the, the mask thing, um, so to speak. Do, you, had, a... you had two cameras last time, didn't you? And that video we watched on Friday, you had yeah, like a yeah. split screen. So I have my my cell phone, and then I have my GoPro. Um, as a body. How do you have it on you? Is it a chest thing or what is it? Yeah, I have a, I have a little clip. Let me, I, I can show you guys. I've that. got that too here in a kit that I've never even taken out of the wrapping because I had no reason to strap that around me and have it on me, but now I do. So that's kind of what I figured it had to be. I've just never played with the one I have. And then that Alex, might be a good idea. Oh, sorry, Josh. I was just going to ask if do you just wear it all, like on the outside? Do you make any effort to conceal that GoPro or do you just have it? Out there for God and everybody to see. You could see it in the video, Josh. Can you say it again? I was just wondering if you try to do you try to hide that GoPro at all, or do you just walk in with it strapped outside your shirt? Um, I mean, not really. I kind of try to hide it a little bit, but um, I just have it clipped right here. I have an attachment. Oh, that's a lot easier than the shit I'm talking about. The thing I'm talking about is a big strap. Yeah, yeah. my gear is lots better. It's uh, pretty small. I, I like this. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go see. Uh, there may be one of those. Like I said, I've got a kit that I just never played with because I had no reason to strap things anywhere except on a bike handle or on my, you know. And see, stuff. so it's, it's not too bulky at all. Um, and I think with a button-down shirt, you could almost put a strap on and kind of clip it to the strap and put a button 
down shirt over top of that and let it poke through. I'm just wondering, could you get a lot of these private businesses and just having that camera on can be enough just to get you checked out? Uh, yeah, that's definitely a concern that I had, but um, I, you know, I figure you know I'll deal with that if it comes to it. But so far, nobody said anything about the camera. And, you know, I just do my best to just get through it. And, well, I would think in a in a, a an area that seems to be as populated as yours, there's probably a good percentage of folks walking around with the camera pointed somewhere at most times. The whole GoPro people. I mean, it's not a uncommon thing to see in Lafayette. Sometimes there's folks walking around with them and well, that's well, because well, it's yeah, private, they have that know. discretion. And especially if they just got their ass handed to them by somebody who's not going to wear a mask, even though they really, 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 really want him to, um, then the ego kicks in and I'm just trying to cover bases. I don't know. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know. If well, it that officer that leaned in. Oh, go ahead, John. I was just thinking whether it would be an advantage or a disadvantage. I, I, it depends on the situation, I suppose, each case in itself as to whether you want them to see the camera or or sometimes, you know, you want it to be surreptitious in your um, glasses or something hidden, you know. Sometimes a camera might save your life. Um, other times it might cost you your life is, is what I'm saying difficult to know yeah i have a, a sweater I, I can go get that real quick to show you what i was wearing today when i was going in the stores um, I'll tell you what I, how i had it because uh it's a black sweater so it kind of blends in and has like a little zipper so i can put the zipper over part of the camera so it's a lot harder to spot and i think just most people um even if they did see it like they wouldn't really know what to say so <laughs> Yeah, just a YouTuber, aren't you? Yeah. Just say I'm a secret shopper. At all, I'm a secret. Well, it shopper. seemed like in the video we watched when the officer leaned over the counter and said he doesn't really want it; he's just looking for a show. It seemed like he may have spotted your camera and kind of. Sure, but no one's literally the whole time I've been doing this. I've had a couple encounters, and nobody ever even said anything about me filming. So, going back to that Friday, the one we were looking at on Friday. That guy behind the counter, the um, guy who they called over, I think, who said that you passed him on the door and you ignored him and that sort of thing. Did he, You were aware of him saying the word offer, didn't you? I offered you a so-and-so and you refused and because you were sort of dancing around that sort of offer and acceptance thing quite, quite um, well, I thought. Did you were yeah. aware of that? Uh, did the word yeah. off? Uh, did that sort of... We were talking about, yeah, I was just doing my best to avoid saying that I declined. Yeah. yeah. That's very, one thing, Allison. Yeah, never decline, Allison. Never say okay. no. Yeah. It's like, it's like telling a cop no or telling a yeah. bank no. You don't say no, you give them a counter offer. It's like vaccine refusers or so climate deniers or something. It's it's uh, it's been a well known sort of axiom in um, common law to never refuse anything, but to conditionally accept it. You know, I I will wear your mask as long as you put fifty thousand in my bank account now to cover any costs that may occur in the future, as Josh calls it. The what was it called? the retainer or you know i i will i will happily take your vaccine as long as you sign this affidavit that you take personal responsibility for any damages that are done between now and you know eternity. in perpetuity yes <laughs> <laughs> now one of the easy ones to go to is the you know um medical exemption because yeah. they're by law they're not even allowed to ask you for any proof of this or, you know, what your condition is, they're not allowed to ask at all. And this is one my wife used um, last Friday, I think it was, that uh, she printed off the thing on the government website that said, you don't have to wear a lanyard, you don't have to provide proof of any evidence that you are exempt, you basically self-certify yourself as exempt. I don't know if you've got the same in America, but I think you do. In we fact, have, yes, there I is have. one. Yeah, I know David Weiss 
had the uh, he was passing it out to people, telling them to go download it, and you could. I think I have. We'll have to get it for you, Allison. But that's that's two of the things you can do right off the bat at all times is carry around that little piece of paper with you that says, you know, you're, you know, I'm allowed to not wear a mask because of a medical exemption and, and you, you are not allowed know. to use and ask me about <laughs> it. Yeah. It says it right there on, on the form. I mean, and that should the, be the showstopper full stop. That should yeah. be it from there yeah. on. If they persist, you should be insisting on speaking to the manager of the establishment and asking him why his staff are potentially leaving themselves personally liable to a fine and uh, the company as well because they don't because they're breaking the law by asking you to prove what why you have an exemption basically they're breaking the law um, Alex do you do you go in with this uh, like sort of full frontal attack sometimes or has it worked for you or is it is it a uh, red rag to a bull or or what um well yeah i, I do have it um, where i can pull it up on my phone i don't have the actual paper with me but um for virginia um there's the governor's order where at the end of it there's a, a list of exemptions like people who um, have trouble removing the mask by themselves without any help for anyone that has trouble breathing, which that would apply to everyone. Um, and then it says right below that, that um, you don't have to produce any kind of medical evidence of your condition. So is that not a showstopper right there? Uh, I mean, how on earth did it get to the point where the police were called and there's all sorts of people around you? I mean, if, that, if it's that clear, can, do they not back off at that point? You would think that, you would think so, but I mean, these guys that I've dealt with, they just don't seem to care at all. They're like my business, my rules. Like I don't care about the medical exemption. Like oh, yeah, they had the same thing with segregation back in the '60s. Yep. You yeah, can't no, eat here because you're black. You know, yeah. and I've, that doesn't I've, fly. Yeah. And it just doesn't phase them. They're they're so brainwashed by policy and what the mainstream doctors say, what Fauci says. I wonder if that, if, if at that point you could threaten to call the police yourself and say, look, you're discriminating against me. You're clearly breaching one of the, the, the state laws or whatever about discrimination. Um, I wonder how that would pan out. Well, that was one of my questions for you, Alex. Have you given thought as to how far you're going to be willing to take these violations? Are, are you going to be taking anybody to court? Is this just a uh, more of a demonstration at the time and place that you're doing it? Are you going to try to hold these people responsible? Uh, yeah, how, how, how far are you willing to go? Well, you know, that's something I, I've had to think about. And, uh, you know, I really prefer not to have to deal with the courts because I'm pretty sure you have to wear a mask, a mask now to go to court. <laughs> I definitely wouldn't want to even have to deal with that, you know, because I'm <laughs> somebody to court over getting denied access to go to court. <laughs> well, again, I don't know how they would do that. I know a lot of places are doing Zoom, court over Zoom. How can they, again, if you have, if the, <laughs> if the governor says you don't have to wear a mask, here, 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 and here, and here. Of all the places that that definitely applies, maybe not in Whole Foods, maybe not in Target, where it definitely applies is in public spaces, especially government buildings. They're the ones that definitely have to comply to those governor's orders. So if the, I don't know if, if a judge would override the governor, I don't know how that would work. But if the governor says you're exempt and don't have to wear it, I don't know how they can say, look, you have to wear it. No, I'm exempt. The whole reason I'm here is because every motherfucker wants to tell me that I have to wear a mask. You're no different. I'm exempt. I don't know. I can spell it for you. I don't know what else I can do. It says so right here, right here. I, I would carry around 50 fucking copies of that governor's order, stapled whole, page after page, one whole bundle to give to people. Here, I got it highlighted. It's at the end. Check it out. Here's the whole fucking order. But at the end is the one I'm talking about where I'm exempt. What's the issue? 
and I would just hand them out, educate every motherfucker here. Here's 15 pages. It's the whole governor's order. Specifically, I have the little tabs right there, like where you can sign the signature, just so you know exactly which paragraph and everything. There it is. It's all laid out. I'm exempt. Give it to the judge. Give it to the bailiff. I don't care who the fuck you have to give it to. That's why I'm here, because some dipshit tells me I have to wear a mask. Now, this dipshit wants to tell me I have to wear a mask? I thought I was exempt. Sorry, I'm going to rant off a little bit on this. <laughs> no, you're right. That's a good idea. Um, maybe I'll have to try going to the courthouse to see if I can even gain entry. We'll have to get a GoPro strapped to Josh, I think. Set him, set him loose in a mall or something. Well, there you go. That could be another thing, Allison. Whenever you go shopping, just start recording it. Knowing that camera's there, for one, you'll get used to it. And then, two, if something does happen, that'll be like almost like a little security blanket there for you. You don't have to have it out where people can see it or anything. Just have your phone recording. You know, how much and, how much are one of these GoPro things? Because I wouldn't want I don't want to bring a phone out with me these days because just in case the, well I don't it doesn't really get shit. a decent seven twenty or even a ten eighty one these days for what forty, fifty bucks, maybe thirty if you'd love. Oh really? They're pretty damn what? cheap then. And to, how well, how yeah. Yeah, you can get a cheap one. Yeah, you don't, you don't have to go get the full 4K and 8K ones and all that. that They're out there that do cost a good penny. But as those come out, all the older generations go down. That's how I got mine, which I think is still even a 1080, and it was pretty decent. And what, what sort of card do you need in that, and how long is the battery However like? long you think you want to record, and however big it'll kick. I think mine was a 64, was it was was its limit? No, it may have been a 128. I can't remember. I'll have to go look. And do the batteries last like a mobile phone? Are they like... I can spend in an hour or do, do they go on for like six hours maybe? Yeah, no, the battery doesn't last for very long if you're recording long term. Like the longest I've gotten is maybe like an hour and a half of a uh, full recording. Right. That's still a fair, that's, yeah. that's a fair encounter though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Can you put a SIM card in it so it's uploading? streaming to the internet i presume you can but then if some you can, of the newer yeah. ones stream right alex yeah yeah you can stream it just depends on which platform yeah, if you pay for the, the i the, the initially one. got it so that i could live stream to youtube but right after i got it youtube changed the rules so where you need a thousand subscribers so <laughs> There's and there are off-brand ones. The the GoPro one would probably be the higher end one, more expensive ones. This one is called Contour. No, sorry, Cross Tour, and it's 1080 and it works really well. I think it even Good does. Enough. Uh, right here, I'm looking at a used GoPro Hero waterproof 1080 5 megapixel HD Sport Action, 34.99 used on eBay. Right. Uh, okay. Um, Here's so Walmart. With almost them. no excuse not to have one of them, I think. No, GoPro Hero 3, 1080p for $49 on Newegg. Sam's Club's got a GoPro Hero 7 for 110 Mercari. There you go. GoPro Hero 7, 10 megapixel Ultra HD camera with 4K for $43 plus $10 shipping on Mercari. Well, why this are you is looking at that strap chest thing? I know from the book, but I, I, I've never even pulled it out of plastic again. I never had a reason, but I may have a clip. I don't even know. Let me look. Uh, while, while you're looking at those things, what about um, covert cameras like um, pens in your top pocket and that sort of thing? They're damn cheap these days I'm, I'm as well, aren't they? That. Yeah, um, there's uh, spy glasses that you can get where there's yeah. a camera in the middle of the frame. You can get a perfect view. Yeah, and they you can stick a micro SD in them, and that's like 64 gig or whatever. I wonder how much they've got to be down to like 20, 30 bucks now, I imagine. I know it's um, Jonathan from Jersey was doing some secret shopping for a while. And they Why went, doesn't oh. that surprise me? And they gave him right. these little clip on cameras, right? So you're supposed to like tape it basically to your t shirt, and then you put your shirt on over it and you like poke it out through the side or something. 
and it was all weird and complicated and it was a big pain in the ass but he took it and streamlined it a little bit and like put it on a tie clip and just made it super simple and you could just put it and clip it right inside of there and it was almost completely invisible but it had a nice big wide angle lens and you, he was getting all sorts of really good footage but he said he would basically refined their camera system to make it real simple because it would stream oh it right to his phone and as long as your phone was within like 100 feet of you it was captured in what was ever whatever your camera was picking up i'll have to ask him what kind of software he was using i'm worried this won't work they'll call me on this like you can't wear a mask but you can fucking <laughs> strap that to your hand because <laughs> you can turn it upside down and strap it to your chin can you <laughs> so it's covering your mouth <laughs> like a jock strap <laughs> like an eight ball <laughs> yeah. well one of these places that I was going to was um, right after I get off work right here so what I would do is I would put my cell phone in vertical just leave it in my shirt pocket and it's a black shirt so it kind of blends in like nobody's ever noticed it or said anything just had my phone there and it, you know if anyone asks I mean it's just quick access you know I'm usually looking for like a YouTube video or something with my uh my earpiece so I, I can even actually have that on the cameras app. Um, record. I have an app where you can record and use your phone for anything else and it doesn't show up on the screen What's that app? Do you know? Um, I think it's called Background Video Recorder. Um, it's for Android. I don't. I don't know if there's one for. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's several. You could just search like Secret Recorder or something like that. There's several different apps out there that do the same thing. Uh, someone needs to mute. That's me. Can you mute me? I, I can probably mute you. I don't know that I could be able to unmute you. Might be wrong. That might just be Skype, but I don't know. Have you got any questions, Alison? I have some uh, some some experience, but I was if I can get to this computer, I could kind of see you guys, right? I um I was trying to change format quietly. Um, that's all right. We can come back to you. Yeah, please do. I might Not be able worries. to mute myself with the star six. I know I can unmute myself. I can mute you so you don't have to worry about it. Okay. And then I'll unmute you. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, you I, do, I do think video or audio capture it has to be one of the paramount things. Even at your front door, in your car, walking around, if you're going into public. I mean, it's sad as it is. Without some video footage, a lot of people would have got away with a lot of shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the cops now, it's it was $3 billion in 2019 alone for money they had to pay out for violating people's rights caught on camera. Yeah, that's the, um, what's it, something amendment audits, isn't it, people? Yeah, well, I mean, just anybody with the recorder recording police, not even just mm. auditors, but police getting caught lying. Well, without a recorder, it's your word against theirs. And in mm -hmm. civil court, that is next to useless, absolutely pointless. Yep, they Don't have higher standing just tell because them they're, they're being guys. recorded. I'm sorry? Do you, have to, do you have to disclose that they're being recorded? Depends Not in on... this country, no. One one person can no. It's like recording telephone conversations. As long as you don't have to tell the other person that you're recording a telephone conversation, but that's UK law. Um, I think it's similar in the US. In some states, it's I don't. Different know. state to state. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but that's only to... in a. That's oh, sorry. That's only going to be in a private business or a private residence when you're out in public that's a different story when you're out in public you don't need consent or anything like that you could have 14 cameras hidden on you and walk around wherever the hell you want and you don't have to require anybody's consent to do that because they are in public there is no expectation of privacy when in public. and that includes private businesses 
doesn't it? No. That improves that's, private businesses. That's going to depend on state law. That's where state law is going to kick in. Because if right. they don't want it being done and it's their private business, then they have that say. If you're in public, you don't. it doesn't matter. But again, but still, if they don't know um, and you have a recording of it, it could always come in useful later on down the line. <laughs> like Missouri <laughs> is a I mean. one-party consent state. And the person recording can also be the person giving the consent. Some states it's different. Some states you cannot give the consent and to do the recording and be the same person. Now, this might only be in private property, though, as well, or over the phone. But if you're in public, right. I believe nobody has the right to any type of privacy if you're in public. You can be recorded. Well, you can be, you know, all that kind of stuff. Well, they point cameras and record us every day of the bloody week. I mean, I live in the UK, for Christ's sake. I can't set foot out of my house without the neighbors recording me. So, yeah. Well, I here's agree. what's interesting. You should be able to wear a mask around out in public at all times because you have to create the privacy that you want if you're out in public. If you want privacy, you have to create it. And really, that's the only way to do it is to wear a mask. <laughs> well, you see, the thing is... I, 15 years ago, when I got my motorbike license, I found these things called snuds or whatever they're called that would cover up because my neck, I hate my neck getting cold. So this was like a, a, a sock thing with the top and bottom cut off. You know what I'm talking about. And, and you put it around your neck. Yeah, you've got one there. Exactly. So I used to go around <laughs> with that on. And now I don't feel I can because I'm going to look like a sheep. <laughs> and again, there is, I do find a certain amount of comfort in that anonymity. I, I, I do find sometimes I like to be anonymous. Like when it was, if it's fucking freezing out and snowing, I don't mind wrapping a fucking scarf around my face and, you know, covering my face and nose. My nose doesn't get cold. And I do it with wearing this too. sunglasses in in the summer. You yeah. know, it's it's a level of anonymity. I don't wear sunglasses anymore either because I realised they were a con too. But we won't go into that. <laughs> We've been joined though by I don't know, Alison. Josh? It's Alison still. She just switched platforms. She went off her phone and got on her computer. Okay. Uh, See, we have one that sees. Allison sees. Allison Briscoe sees. A B sees. <laughs> Love it. Isn't that good? A B C and, and Mark. I saw a Mark joined us earlier. Is that she was Allison's probably trying Mark? to hurry up and get her ABCs switched over. That's all. Right. <laughs> That's my Uh oh. We is this planning on going out to the patrons or anything? We or? can edit it to get anything like yeah. what that. If she doesn't want that scene, we can take that out, that kind of stuff for sure. Phone number, whatever. Of course, she gave out her number or tried to, and I forgot to do it on the air. Sorry about that, Allison. Well, you did say go ahead. I never did do it. That's scared. I, um, how does... Oh, I was at this. So um, I still have my headset on, and I need to close this door. And... um. First name was, yeah, was uh, my friend. So. I think uh, your computer is using the computer mic instead of the headset mic. Well, I haven't plugged in the headset mic yet. Oh, that's why. So that's what's going on there because you're definitely okay. difficult to hear. I'm going to have to get with you at some point, I guess, uh, Alex, or go watch videos because, man, I've got so many pieces of crap here. There is a clip in here, but I do not see a way to attach it to this camera yet. And there's a hundred other things that may be part of it, but I'm not going to waste more time on it. I thought it would be simple, but. And I, I don't know if GoPro made a, a version of that. The one that I got um, was like off of Amazon. It's called a Telesin. I don't know if it's back. Right, right. I see it. Well, see this. See, yeah, because that's what I'm looking at is a bunch of those screw things, too, in the back. So that's what it is. I've got to attach something else. But I have a clip, you know, and I have a thing that looks like it would slide into a thing here but i just don't know where i'll figure it out though but now that i've seen you've got the screw thing it's part of it i didn't know that had to be in it too so yeah. I'll, I'll figure it out i'll work it out thank you God, being so cheap i might actually have to go get a gopro now GoPro. alex quick question yeah. um when, watching your video on friday um 
when the police and that came up, is that the first time the police come up behind you, um, you know, or, or been involved? Uh, as far as the mask thing, yeah. Yeah, right. And and <laughs> did, what was your heart doing at that point? Was it racing? Because it didn't sound like it. But <laughs> were you sweating? Because it didn't look like it. My heart was racing pretty fast. But, you know, just the, I, I know that when the adrenaline gets high, the most important thing to do is just breathe and right. you know, focus and uh, stay calm. So that's a really good tip there. It is. It, that's the, one of the most important things, and it's the thing I have the most trouble with because once my <laughs> adrenaline gets going, my brain says you need more oxygen. So I, I just want to just hyperventilate. I just can't get enough oxygen, but then I can't talk. I can't say anything if I just sit there and breathe as much as my brain wants me to. So I have to make these conscious efforts to take big, deep breaths and pause when I speak and try to keep myself slowed down. Otherwise, I'll just get myself ramped up. Yeah. Yeah. See. I, I I need to discipline myself to stop speaking because I I'm a babbler, and you know I, I'll sit there and I'll watch myself in third party, uh, watching myself telling them stuff that I just you know in my own advice I would never tell them in my life and I'll just like oh as Plashman put it he could have cut his own tongue out at that point and I totally agree I need to slow down calm down and just not say anything or keep it to an absolute minimum and breathe and breathe but that this is it I can't I walk down the street I see a copper you know, a hundred meters away and my heart's going <laughs> and I'm thinking, you know, that I just, yeah, this is why I don't leave the house. Well, you need to up your THC and take a little bit. You got too much blood in your THC system, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, doubt that. Really? Because you take what I just smoked and that's what you smoke all day long. But you put in a week. <laughs> that's, that's way too much blood. Way well, too much blood. This is another half of the reason why I don't leave the house because all they have to do is come 10 feet within you and go, <laughs> you smell of weed uh, and you're arrested and you're searched and your bum searched and everything. It's, it's, well, that, that, that doesn't work it's over here. Anymore, the sir. Sir. Yeah, the federal it. or the, uh, over here, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that smelling marijuana is not reasonable suspicion anymore for anyone. Yeah, it, they did the same over here. It, it's not um, it's not reasonable grounds for anything, but they still do it. I just smell I, I can smell marijuana, and I refuse. You 20 say officers parked behind me that chased me down an interstate with weed smell in my car, and I refused search and drove away and went to work. Cheech and Chong. <laughs> Zach, do you have that case law by chance? I had not heard that, that the smell is no longer RAS. My friend yeah, across let me, the street. Uh, let me see if I can find it. It's always in, you know, that channel audit the audits. Uh huh. He was talking about it. That's the only reason that I was like, oh, that. Yeah, he because he always goes into that's new it to me too. Now. The... That is new to me, but so Alex, you yeah. said that's the first time you had cops called over the mask thing. Do you do First Amendment audits? Um, not really. No, I just watched a lot of them. My my favorite channel is uh, M Against It Press. One of the best. Yeah, and you know, I I learned a lot from him. Like. It's not like I do first-hand audits, but the stuff that he does, like it, it really teaches you how to talk to cops and be chill, and you know, use your pick your words carefully and stay calm. You know, that's that's really the biggest thing. So I am not a big fan of the antagonizers and the name callers and the things, and but <laughs> there's an exception to that rule. And he's basically the polar opposite of Amy Gansett Press. Uh, it's press on. I think the, the info that he puts out there is life-affirming information. Because 
the things he's talking to these cops about is about his life. It's about existence. It's not about how to interact with police or how to interact with government officials. He just happens to have these conversations with police and government officials. Uh, and sometimes when they step out of lines, he can shift gears real fast. And he takes it up several notches. Uh, but when he lays down information, the stuff that he lays down is absolutely amazing. Yeah, I actually saw like one or two videos of his. Somebody in the chat recommended it. Yeah, he has an, uh, a different style for sure. Um, but yeah, he, he does know a lot of uh, good info about the law. Yeah, I'm finding it. I'm not sure if it, uh, it might be a state thing. I know Merit says Supreme or Maryland's highest court affirms that police can't use the smell of marijuana as reasonable. Uh, it's suspicion. been proved over here, man, as well. Yeah, but court it rules doesn't marijuana stop. odor not enough to search. Is that recent? Yeah, January 22nd, 2020, January, July 28th, 2020. Hmm. But if they want uh, to kick your door down, they'll kick your door down and they'll use that and they'll know full well that um, the police criminal board or whatever will back them up. Uh, unless you've got video evidence that's showing what they're doing. But, yeah, that's the trouble. You open the door to these people, they can just go... <laughs> That smells like marijuana. And and then they'll say, we need to come in. You say, you need a search warrant. And they say, we don't need a warrant because there's a crime in in happening right now. Therefore, we don't need a search warrant. And they'll just boot your door. Hence why I don't answer the door either. I got, I got pulled over um, back in 2013. Um, I definitely was speeding on the highway. But um, when he pulled me over, um, pretty much the first thing he said was, I, I smell marijuana, like, I need to search your vehicle. And I, I tried to say, yeah. no, like, consent. I, I mean, I knew that much, that you don't have to consent. And I tried that, but he's like, no, step out of the car. Yeah. You have to consent. And he, he put me in cuffs to detain me. And, dude, that, that was a crazy experience. experience. That was uh, pretty scary. It, it's their, it's their go-to over here in the UK. I mean, they can pull you over and demand a, a cocaine and cannabis swab at the side of the road. And these things are about as useful as a PCR test. Um, so the, it's it's an absolute go-to over here. You know, they, they can literally kick your back door in if they smell weed or they think they smell weed or they just pretend they smell weed. So they, they can just kick your door in as and when. Um, it's... It's a very dodgy situation. Yeah, and it, it's like crazy how thuggish they act like they're a gang. Because uh, what, what happened with me is uh, after he put me in cuffs, um, he uh, set me aside, um, he started to search, and then the cop pulled up. And he just went right along with it, like, oh, I'm the criminal. Like, I, I tried to get closer to my car so I could see what he was doing to watch him search. Because... At that point, like, I honestly had no idea, like, if he was going to try to plant something. I was generally, genuinely worried about that. And yeah, so right. I was closer, and the, the second cop who showed up was like, stay back here, I'm going to fucking tase you. And it was yep. just like, man, like, he didn't even know, like, why I was stopped initially. or He didn't know anything. He just saw his buddy was searching my car, and he just jumped right in to, to help him out. It can quickly get out of control, and... These guys are like packs of wolves. They they don't they don't give a shit. They are they swear allegiance to each other. So they will. They're like masons. They will yeah, and it's protect like each other. Blood in the water. You can see one and two and then five and then eight. And it's like, hey hey, <laughs> don't you have other shit to fucking do? I'm sure there's other things going on in this little town. Yep. Yeah, he was just looking to find anything he could find, which he didn't. I mean, I, I had a prescription medication that I legally had, and he was trying to press me about that, but there was nothing he could do. Like, I, I didn't have any marijuana or anything. Like, he was just looking for 
he was looking to start something basically he was like a thug yeah yeah and it doesn't matter how intelligent you talk to these people if if you do that they think you're a smart ass if you speak stupidly to them they think you're a village idiot and they I don't know. You just curl up into a ball and just start crying, I suppose. <laughs> what can they do with that? <laughs> I mean, my advice has always been, ever since I've, I've researched this, is to just play dumb. Just stay stum. Um, because no amount of reasoning can get through to these people if they're on one. I truly, truly think, I don't know, I'm knocking on wood again, but I think it's this thing that you put out that truly helps, just like Alex was doing. I was like, I don't know, I'm very empathic watching shit. I can feel when you tripped when those cops came up and I saw you ease that camera on and all that. You did it so smooth, brother. I think it's a thing you put out. It's a thing, almost like a cloaking device, almost like a field around you of these chill. These are not the droids you're looking for. Oh, these are not the fucking droids you're looking for. Exactly. This is what I keep hearing. I ride Jedi around mind with that trick. shield around me all the time. Like, it's always on, especially when I'm out being, you know, a little off the beaten track sometimes. So I just ride shielded. This is what I hear from my mate who's a delivery driver who hasn't worn a mask yet. They've threatened him at PCR tests and all sorts of stuff. It's like, this is what I hear from my wife. It's like a Jedi mind trick. You just walk in there like you're meant to be walking in there as we are. Um, and and they just sort of bounce off you. It's, it's bizarre. I've never tried it. Like I say, I haven't been out, so... Not looking forward to it. Being overly sensitive my whole life, empathic, feeling everybody's shit, I've had to deal with putting up the barriers enough, I guess, so that now I can almost use that to my advantage. And use it as a shield almost. So are there any uh, certain questions about things to say? I think that... Um... You need to know your local laws. Yep. A mandate is not a law. It's a request. That's important. A lot of these things are just them requesting you to do this stuff. It's a suggestion. It's not a, you know, an official law. If you don't do this, you're going to jail. That's not how it works. And really knowing your rights is, is half the battle. G.I. Joe said it best. Knowing is half the battle, you know. And the other half is violence. <laughs> but yeah, know what you, you know, what you're allowed to do. Stay, always stay within those rights. And then always keep calm. Have your little piece of paper with you from, you know, you can print You can, like Alex, you could just bring it up on your phone. You could just have the picture on your phone saved. Yeah. Always yeah. have that ready. And start recording. Just just out of practice, when you go into a store, just start recording. It'll get you used to it and comfortable, you know. But yeah, it's and a lot of it is, it's just practice. I mean, Alex is good with talking to people he doesn't know. He's done a lot of flat smacking. He's been out there bunches of times, you know. Yep, just you got to flex those muscles for sure. You yeah. definitely, it's something you have to practice. I mean, it's not, it's sitting talking to people on the radio even is not the same thing. You know, I thought that would help me with it when I got out in Lafayette on the street and walking up to folks is a whole different vibe. It's a whole different set of mental skills you got to bring to it than just sitting here bullshitting, you know. Yeah, in the comfort of your own home. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's exactly. Totally you're different. Safe. You're surrounded by safety. And out there, you're not. You're totally open, totally out there. So, yeah, it, it's a different skill set. You definitely have to exercise. And that's definitely something we can do. You wanted to role play. We certainly can do some of that. We have the, the Jedi Master himself here. Alex is definitely <laughs> the one to show you how to do it right. Wait, I think I can even add to it. Hold on one second. Let me see if it'll work. It may not.
Are you planning on going to Georgia, Alex? I'm ready now. Um, I can play a mascite. I can play a mask hole for the role playing now. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm going to have to ask you to uh, put those groceries down and step out of here, ma'am, because you didn't. Just, yeah, I'm going to do a lot of that. Because that's really all they can do is that. I, I, you're breaking up a little bit there while you have to turn your antivirus software off, please. <laughs> yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, there you are. Here are you. Okay. You. You're a little hey, quiet, but um, we can hear you. Hmm? A little quiet? Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Um, when the first, you know, when we got the, the mandate from the mayor, I went and I printed off everything and, um, walked into, you know, the grocery store and there was the sentry there and uh, stood my ground and I walked outside waiting for the manager and uh, my lips were red. I mean, my lips were numb and my face was hot. And uh, then the manager came out and we went outside and uh, uh, he told me his spiel and as he's, you know, uh, gesturing towards the, the banner above him, you know, and I said that he gets to the medical condition part. And I said, you know, cause, cause page three, um, item three dot three or whatever. I mean, I need paragraphs of, of what it was on. I could tell him. And anyway, so, um, <clears throat> man, I'm reliving it in my head. So he gives me the insert and certain medical conditions. I said, do you have a list of those medical conditions in your pocket? He said, I do not. I said, well, that was me. That's me. And he said, well, get her done. I went in and, and came out real quick. And uh, so I just take my pointer finger and do a little circle around my face and just say medical condition when I walk past the sentries. And they, you know, leave me alone. Um, I did have, uh, I went to the doctor and they did to get, see if I could get a doctor's excuse like six months ago. And so they would, you know, I'd have a piece of paper that said something. Anyway, um, she didn't realize that I didn't have a mask on until I asked about help, you know, getting me a little piece of paper that gets me out of wearing a mask. So I went all the way through the whole deal before, she, you know, oh, you're, and she and her student were both wearing masks the whole time. And, uh, and then when I left there, the, uh, uh, the century, there wasn't a, like an outdoor century when I came in, the lady at the four year did my temperature no she, yeah she did my temperature and I went on and uh then I can't even do this talking to y'all um telling the stories uh she uh, then when I went to get, have blood work done I got my I got a private room because you know I couldn't wear a mask so they gave me a private room to get my blood drawn and now I wanted to make an appointment to the dermatologist but I'll have to wear a mask uh and I said um okay, then I'm not going. Uh, and I haven't gone, I haven't made any phone calls to, get, to hire up regarding this because six months ago, I would have to wear a mask for my, um, I wish you could see me, my um, <laughs> dermatologist because he had auto, he was taking medication for an, uh, you know, for immunity, for his immunity, okay? So I said, okay, well, give me another dermatologist. And they called, I think I just blew off the next phone call. And then, uh, so I decided to go because the thing was getting bigger. And uh, they said, well, you're going to have to wear a mask. I said, well, um, then I won't be seeing y'all. So it's, it's changing. They're up in the, it's like, it's, I don't know. And I, I was going to, they wouldn't let me not wear a mask at the eye doctor. So I didn't go, I didn't go to the eye doctor. And um, I did get, that sucks. it was service. Here in town at one quick mart, and uh, after a few times, and then uh, so I just don't go there anymore. But I was in another city, and I went and went to the bathroom, got my things, and the dude took a step back. He was wearing a mask behind the plexiglass, took a step back, and took my Red Bull, my flashlight, and said that he was not gonna, he was refusing service because of the mask. So we, we didn't get any fuel there either. Um, it's the, uh, I don't. 
Well, I think the role playing, I, the role playing idea is it was for so I don't get like I am right now talking to you guys and whoever else, the other eight hundred fifty people. Well, those two words yeah. I think Alex yeah. pulled out: reasonable accommodation. It's fine. You don't like that I'm not wearing a mask. Then you must make reasonable accommodations. I, you you still can't deny me. I'm still a protected class of person. There's the American with Disabilities Act. You, you can't just say it's too expensive to put in big stalls for people with wheelchairs. So there's just not people with wheelchairs aren't allowed here. That's not how that works. There's a law. You have to allow people with disabilities. You have to make reasonable accommodations for them to be there. And I think you, if you can learn those two words and start throwing that up in their face, there's words, there's triggers that will send off alarm bells, things that they've heard before that will make them think twice. And that reasonable accommodation, I think, is going to be one of those big trigger words. They're going to make them, uh, where have I heard that before? Some, there was some training I've had. There was some Real paperwork I read right, somewhere right. that said I have to make reasonable accommodations, just what this lady fucking told me. And they're going to have to stop and think. As well, Josh. That American Disabilities Act you were talking about, knowing that, I mean, reading that, that's um, got to be a good place to start. So you can quote this stuff at them. Well, I received disability. I mean, I, I'm uh, technically, you know, I got the papers for that. I was going to say that. Right? I do have the papers. You, you said that yeah. earlier. So you, you have the backup that some people don't. I mean, I think what, what a lot of people are basing on is some of the accommodations, like Alex has at the end of this statement, that is different than the Disabilities Act itself. I'm pretty sure it's similar wordage, but the Disabilities Act, you're covered if you're disabled for damn sure. You know what I mean? You could take it to the court if you had to and not have to worry about it. And who is not disabled by having then you get breathing that. restricted? Exactly. Exactly. Then you get into the realities of the verbs. I mean, the words and what it says and how they phrase it. And that covers pretty much any fucking body who can't remove it when they're just, you know, can't fucking breathe through a something you're not supposed to be breathing through. It, it hurts everybody. Yeah. And people live through it. That's one thing, but it's hurting you, you know? So, yeah, there's definitely. I see once it starts getting to the courts, it's only going to have to take one judge. And all this is going to, yeah, it'll come tumbling down. I hope it's Allison's uh, uncle. <laughs> yeah, let him go to I haven't even talked to him about any of this because he's where he is. You know? Mm -hmm. um, this is a good resource, uh, resource that I heard of. Uh, it's called the HealthyAmerican.org with uh, Peggy Hall. Um, she's she's really on point with the uh, the mask thing and and all the lockdown stuff. Um, she has a lot of information on there, and I actually uh, I just uh, found out um, that she has a YouTube channel, and I, I had seen her in other people's uh, channels on interviews and stuff, but she has her own channel. And um, she uploaded uh, this page with like 75 different responses um, that you can download from her um, from her website. What was that website again? Scenario: um, the Healthy the American. Healthy American oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, man. HealthyAmerican.org. Um, I follow her. Pride. I have her she site. I'm mean, on the page. I don't know. I have yeah. the site. Yeah, she she uh, she knows her stuff for sure. Um, and there's um, actually a little little role play document that she she made out, and um, it's like uh, different scenarios with uh, possible responses that that um, you can give to them um, when they tell you different things, um, like when they're trying to say that you know you have to wear a mask or we have the right to refuse service. Well, you can say that um, we'll actually. Uh, we have to something along the lines of like pub, public accommodation um, where it's against the law for them to discriminate and refuse service to you based on the mask. Like they have to be able to prove that you're like a health danger and there's really no way to prove it that you're going to spread some virus to other people by not wearing a mask. So, um, this I is mean, you're brilliant. Protected. 
you're, you're literally protected by the law and just by, you know, just being a normal person. Like, See, the common law folks started getting charged with paper terrorism. Uh, where they can't charge you with paper terrorism is in Whole Foods. So when you walk in with 14 manila folders, each with identical copies of all of these letters, <laughs> your religious exemption card, your notice of discrimination, <laughs> civil rights, a friendly letter to business owners and about their rights and their responsibilities. I mean, just the amount of paperwork for them to have to go through to make sure that you're not allowed to be in there without a mask on, I think is going to be enough that it's going to be more trouble than it's worth. And I think you'll probably find a lot more success when you just overwhelm them with bullshit to read <laughs> because they're not, they're not going to want to have to go through it. The question that is, are they going to want to risk a lawsuit? At Peggy Hall, the healthy American dog, is, um, she's associated with Dean Clifford as well. Do you know, Josh? I did not know. Yeah. Yeah, he's still around, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> now now is the like, time oh. for these people. <laughs> yeah, it is. Now is the time for them. Yeah. Where are they? Oh, well, this is good. Yeah. Yeah, I know we didn't do a whole lot of role playing, but um, well, that's cool. But we, I, I was, I found information through where I can, you know, I can be three people at once, so I can like, gang up on myself pretty good. There you go. Um, <laughs> yeah. Music is yeah. a That's how I roll. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, check out that Amagansett Press. Yeah, I am. I love Where that guy. Amagansett Press. I grab it. Yeah, Josh and will he, grab it for you. He's, he's very good at speaking, and when you know the law and you stay within the laws, he shows you that you can be very confident that you're not going to get in any real trouble because you're not breaking any laws. You know, if it says it's a mandate, well, that's just a recommendation. And I can respectfully refuse. All those mandates do have ex exceptions and exemptions. Mm -hmm. So if they want to quote the mandate, that's when you pull out the mandate, flip to the part about the exemptions, and just blink at them. This is where silence right. is golden. And when you, they have to let them make all these claims, let them make all the do all the actions if they're going to grab you by the scruff of your shirt and chuck you out into the parking lot let them do that but when you hand them the information let them do with it whatever they will yeah never make claims always ask questions don't claim that you can't throw me out of your shop say can you show me the authority that gives you the right to throw me out of your shop the law what makes you special that you get to discriminate against the disabled? How come everybody yeah, that else? Yeah, Press is real good at that, too. Cool. Other have, I'm sure in our, in our you know, viewing audience, the chat, people else that would probably be interested in actually participating in some more role play once you have some of the information you're going to find there at Peggy's site a little more under your belt and then Alex you're always welcome to you know this to come hang out whenever it's easy I know early in the morning that ironworks level it might be a bit much but anytime on a Friday you want to come hang out man you're more than welcome for sure for sure yeah yes. that's cool. thank Second you that yep we'd love to come talk about all your flat smacking I was gonna say dude you've got a whole lot you could bring to the table to hang out and talk with so definitely anytime yeah, yeah. I do. <laughs> Gotta stand up for our rights or we will lose them. It's that simple. When do you plan on debuting your target video? 
Um, I was actually gonna do it tonight. Um, if you want, we can do it here. If, if you have, it's well, like no, it's just up to you. I was about to have to go grab some grub. I just she just went through with a plate full of it, and my stomach's grumbling now. So, but yeah, I was just gonna say after you get it up for sure, we'll definitely watch. We're not show live. It. We're just uh, I'm, I am recording. We're recording right now. Right? Yeah, we're, we're not live. We're not. So, thank God, it wouldn't be much of a debut, but. Yeah, I mean, I, no, the, the more this was more just to give Allison a place to kind of spread her wings a bit, get a more comfort level, and do it. Like I said, after watching you do it with that just grace you brought to it on that video, I couldn't think of a better person, you know. So that's why we had Zach reach out to you. Anytime you want to come back and do this again, Allison, hang out with maybe the scouts on a Wednesday or something, we can put that together. And like I said, just practice, flex no. Yeah. That would be awesome. Um, Cause I'll have them. I'll have information and that I can do that. And then, um, yeah, and I'll. Plus, now you've hung out with this gang of idiots, so you have a little more comfort level with us. So that'll help next time around too. Well, that would be set up. I I didn't get back here to the shop to get, you know, to use this computer without a bunch of noise and people out there and and. Um, you know, so, so there, so there I you have, have it. Anyway, I have, anyway. I have a feeling we might have um, ABCs back on as the guru on the role playing. Uh, right. I, oh. <laughs> you'll be the, <laughs> the special, um, what is it? The customer that you just don't fuck with. <laughs> oh, like I'm a customer. That. I mean, I, I, don't, I haven't, I don't know if I still have. I was I engraved game tag for Pizza Hut when I was sixteen. I'm a customer service. I'm a customer. No, I'm a service expert. <laughs> service, um, whatever it was. Uh, shit, I'm fifty three. I can't remember this shit anymore. Um, anyway, a professional service professional. Service um, professional. And that's my whole. I've always, that's what I do. That's what I've done. And uh, well, I've got a yeah, feeling you're going to. With new people, I can't. You know. Yeah, it would be great. I've got yeah. a feeling you're going to um, become an expert at this. Um, I flew through that, but the, the same HEB the other night, um, I mean, just picked up five pounds, no, ten pounds of apples, five bags of apples, you know, one on each one, three fingers on my right hand and one on, like I'm dancing through there. And on the third finger, were, my keys were hanging. So, and I'm just, this is, you know, pretty much foreclosed. And I was going through the self-checkout and I, uh, I couldn't figure out where the I couldn't which bag did I ring up because there were only five bags and only five and but that's she came over I called her over she had her mask on and I was like I can't find the other one and uh, she's like I don't know what, which one did I ring up she said you have five here and there's five there I didn't do the first troubleshoot my keys were making me think I had a six bag that in, <laughs> um my my pregame uh, parking lot right. so um. Yeah, and uh, that was food. Anyway, there you go. So we, yeah, we could do this again. That would be um, awesome. Yeah, I, I recommend just getting getting yeah. a, a first folder together with all this information. Yeah. And uh, yeah. we'll get back together and we'll go through it and we'll help maybe organize a bit of a game plan and maybe then we'll have more of a direction and we can maybe do a little bit of role playing after that. Perfect. What was our um, original time for next week? The third. Uh. I think or so. Was it, that was a we were Wednesday. Do this on the, okay. Yeah, we can. Um, you want to come back on Wednesday next Wednesday the third? Yeah. That'd be awesome. And I'll and I'll be better prepared. Well, yeah. Why don't we do that? Um, and then on maybe we'll do it on Friday. Alex, do you think you'd be able to show up on a Friday night on Have No Sphere? And we'll just basically maybe do what we're doing now, and we'll help uh, just go through and see what she's got in the folder and help maybe formulate a game plan. I think there'd be a lot of people get a really good takeaway from this conversation. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. That would be awesome. Yeah, and, and we had give me practice, started, right, Josh? The camera looking, who, looking at who, and 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 are being more comfortable with knowing that it'll be out there. Ooh, Josh's buddy Derek yeah. is supposed to be with us this Friday. I'm almost certain. Is that correct? That is correct. And the thirteenth. We're going to have our big show. 12th. With our ladies. I think that's potentially. Friday Rose will be 12th. here for sure. Rose will be here, uh, hopefully, with Jason in tow. But 
um, the fifth, I think, is still open. Is that right? Or did you ever? No, that's right. Because that's yet? because the third is when she's going to come back. So yeah, so with we're going to. Okay, I'm just making sure I got things right here on my calendar because something don't just doesn't look right here. I Good. think I've added something extra. Oh, I see what that was. Okay, learning this new phone. Sorry, but yeah, definitely um, timely. You know, because it's getting to be like more of an issue in some places. Other places are getting yeah. more lax. It's urgency. So, yeah. It was. It's yeah, time. They yeah. Got an urgency. It's urgency about this. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, so what so the fifth works for you know. What's up? The fifth Friday uh, evening with us on uh, Have No Sphere. Does yes. that work for you, sir? Yeah, yeah, that works just fine. Cool. Deal. All right. Well, that's locked up. And let me make sure. Okay. Good to get a repository together of documents as well that we could put in the links to everybody's description. Stuff. Well, yeah, just a download pack. You know, right, like affidavits the, uh, or American legislation. You would think there would be a, a place, well, I guess if Peggy probably has it, that you can go state by state and find your shit. You know what I'm saying? Country by country. Or even across <laughs> the plane, sir. You may have to set that up, Savage. Yeah, from the UK side, yeah. States yeah, and countries are synonymous. Google Docs, or not Google Docs, generic Docs. Somebody else's or something. <laughs> yeah, someone else's. But um yeah, just quickly, thanks, um, Alison, Alex. Great to meet you. Um yeah, look forward to